When you're looking to get started with photogrammetry, do you need to use focus stacking when you build your 3D models? What kind of cameras do you need to use? What type of equipment do you need to use? And how do you set it up depending on the nature of your specimen? I'm Mark Smith with Macroscopic Solutions, and this will be a guided short course on how to focus stack and 3D model small size scientific specimens with the intent of building a 3D model in the end. The first clip is going to be a beginner overview with a nice introduction into the equipment, how we select our equipment, typically using the Macropod Pro 3D by Macroscopic Solutions, and how we advance through the individual steps in order to achieve a final 3D model. Now, the Macropod Pro 3D is a system designed by Macroscopic Solutions in order to provide scientists in the field or in the lab with a complete imaging system. It's designed to be multi-configurable and portable so that you can take it with you to museums, you can take it into the field, or you can set it up in your lab as your primary microscope. It includes a swath of lenses that allow you to image everything from very large samples to your field locations all the way down to a tenth of a millimeter, so you're looking at a 50 to 100 microns in size. You're able to set this system up so that it can perform high resolution focus stacking. You can do 3D photogrammetry with it. You can image wet specimens, pin specimens, and slide mounted specimens depending on the configuration that you decide to go with. The system's all inclusive. It includes all of the parts that you need to multi-configure the system. And that way you can set it up for any application that you have. This short course is being completed in cooperation with Big B. Big B is a National Science Foundation funded project led by Dr. Katja Seltman at the University of California, Santa Barbara. And she has provided us with two different samples, both characteristically different, in order to provide a demo uh, for the creation of a 3D model using focus stacking and photogrammetry techniques. The two samples are going to be a western honeybee, which is going to be slightly larger of the two specimens. It has more hair and it's a little bit more dull in sheen. The next specimen is going to be a helictidae specimen. This specimen uh, is much smaller. It has a much more reflective surface, which means that we're going to think more critically about our lighting. The sample itself is also smaller, which means that we are going to have to change our optics slightly in order to capture the necessary data to build our 3D model. The Macropod Pro 3D includes a number of different stages that you can set up that allow you to accommodate different types of specimens. Things like glass microscope slides, uh, petrographic thin sections, wet specimens in petri dishes, dry pin specimens, and so forth and so forth. So I just want to walk everyone through the different types of stages and what you should be using if you're thinking about focus stacking and photogrammetry. A common stage and setup that we'll use is this. This allows you to translate your specimen along a y-axis and along an x-axis relative to the camera. And what we'd like to do is position an insect box on the stage, which is held tightly with a neutral gray background. And that allows us to photograph the specimen that's in that box really, really flexibly if you're doing focus stacking or 2D imaging. This is a very convenient and flexible way to mount your specimens because you can prepare the specimen in this box prior to placing it on the stage. The other thing I want to call everybody's attention to is this type of stage here. It is designed with a little slit. If you felt so inclined, you could include a microscope slide directly on this stage and use this uh, as a supplement to your microscope. You can then photograph whatever is located on that slide with this type of stage. The other thing I want to draw everybody's attention to is the orientation of this bracket that we have on top of our stack shot. There are two machine screws in here that allow you to flip this around if you need to. And sometimes the working distance is a little bit better when you set the system up for 3D modeling to flip that around. So if you'll notice where my servo motor is on this stack shot, you can see I have my bracket so that it's facing towards the rear. This one is also fo focused towards the rear, but now for 3D, you're going to notice that I have things a little bit reversed. So now that L bracket is actually more towards the, the front of this, where the servo is towards the rear. I have my rotary stage positioned on top, and that's going to be critical in order to capture the data for 3D modeling. We also have our light dome on here. This allows really, really consistent lighting all the way around 
uh, the specimen. We even include a little round piece of paper that fits on top of the stage so you get illumination from the bottom as well. Uh, at the same time, it's open-ended in the rear to allow for really great light uh, background contrast. Uh, you can get a pure black background because the light's not touching anything back here. But we also include these Velcro strips which allow you to sort of change that to either a white or a neutral gray if you're so inclined. The lighting dome breaks away, so that way you can then mount your specimen and you can access the universal stage. The universal stage will rotate along a center axis. It also allows you to rotate your specimen uh, along an x-axis or around an x-axis. And you, this is height adjustable, so you can also change the height of the specimen uh, should you need to as well. A specimen can also be rotated down here. So you have an infinite level of adjustability along uh, a longitudinal z-axis, rotation around an x and a y-axis, and you have translation along an x and a y-axis. When you're done and you've set up your specimen, you can go ahead, attach your light top of the light dome, set up your flashes, and then begin to shoot. The other type of stage that we have, which isn't so relevant for 3D modeling, but I just want to point out, is a stage which allows you to mount the camera directly onto the stack shot. So this is now allowing you to move the camera, which is the common method, not the method that we use most, but this will allow you to image large slabs of rock with your 100 millimeter lens or larger specimens like larger, like small mammals and so forth. It can also be used in combination with our petrographic analyzer, which then functions as a backlit box for which you can place slides on top of. And this box does come uh, with cross polarizers so you can look at things uh, using cross polarized light. Typically valuable for things like geological thin sections and so forth. The lenses provided with the system are designed to cover the basics across the board. Everything from when you're in the field all the way down to the very smallest specimen that you have in the lab. So with that, the first lens that you're going inclu that's included with the system is the Canon 24-105. This functions as your standard telephoto lens. It allows you to use your camera body as a regular camera. Just for reference, this is the exact same camera and lens I'm using to shoot this video. So you can see how versatile it is to have a lens like this in your toolbox. The next lens is the 100 millimeter macro. This is an excellent lens for macro shooting out in the field, or if you need a macro lens in the lab that you can lock the automatic focus on, which allows you then to focus stack larger slabs of rock, larger vertebrate specimens, or specimens that are generally larger than four centimeters in size. This is the lens you're going to be using mostly. And even for this project, it's important to call out that even larger specimens of bees, like large bumblebees and so forth, this lens might be your go-to lens for specimens like those when it relates to 3D modeling. The next and most versatile lens in the pack is going to be your MPE-65. This is a 1-5x fixed focal length lens that allows you to magnify your subjects from a 1 to 1 to a 5 to 1 ratio. This lens is typically going to be the primary go-to lens that you will use to do photogrammetry on small macro, macro to microscopic size subjects. Things typically 4 centimeters in size all the way down to two, one to two millimeters in size. The next lens that's included is the 70 to 200 USM3 lens by Canon. Depending on which Canon body that you get, you're either going to receive a mirrorless or a mirrored option. So those lenses are a little bit different depending on the camera body that you're using, but they're exactly the same uh, when set at 200 millimeters. What's nice about this lens is it can be used as a field-based telephoto lens, things that are really, really handy for birding or capturing details of leaves high up on trees. You can use this to zoom and magnify out the field. But it's even more versatile in the sense that we pair these lenses with Mitsutoyo's long working distance objectives. And you can receive up to five of these lenses, uh, but we don't require that you buy the entire kit. In some cases, we recommend our customers to sort of stay away from the 100X because it's very expensive and it doesn't necessarily provide magnification requirements that most PIs are after. So these come in a range of 
10, 20, 50, and 100x magnification ranges. So this is going to push magnification significantly further than the MPE-65 is capable of. Now typically for 3D modeling, you're going to want to stay away from these objectives. The focal planes are significantly narrow and the time requirement allotted to capture your data is going to be significantly higher, uh, but that doesn't mean that it's impossible. You're still able to 3D model using these objectives if your specimens are smaller. Just know that the, the length of time required in order to 3D model or capture the data of those subjects might be a bit longer than with the MPE-65. And for that reason, and that's because the MPE-65, you can actually control and open up the aperture in order to sacrifice a little bit of quality uh, for the sake of speed. The system is offered with one of three camera bodies. The one that we're going to typically recommend is the Canon 6D Mark II. The reason for this is that it's compact, it's somewhat lightweight from a portable sense, and it's also extremely high performing. Now, this is not as novel as the new mirrorless options, uh, however, sometimes when you're focus stacking, having that mirror is really advantageous because it's another barrier that keeps dust off of your camera sensor. And dust can really corrupt uh, the way that a final image is output. So sometimes it's cheaper and better to go with the 6D Mark II. It's the camera that we use 95% of the time. Now, if you did want a mirrorless option, we also offer the Canon EOS R. This is a mirrorless body. It's high performing, just like the last. It has a slightly bigger sensor, uh, functions in all the same way, but there are some setbacks. One is the viewfinder is now an LCD screen. It's not optical glass to look through anymore. So if you're in the field, there might be some lag. You might find that to be somewhat annoying. Either way, it captures beautiful images. Um, but this is sort of the newer setup. This is the direction that most camera manufacturers are headed. So the EOS R is a viable option. Just know that it no longer includes that mirror and therefore dust might be a bigger battle for you. The last option is the uh, 5DSR by Canon. So the 5DSR is a very high megapixel sensor. I think it's 52 or 51 megapixels. Uh, the gain is somewhat substantial when you're looking at uh, printed resolution. So if you need to make large format prints for museums or exhibits, this is generally the camera that I will be using. However, as it pertains to just digital data, publication images, the images are simply too large and not enough of a gain in order for this to be the primary go-to camera body. So it's available as an option if museum printing, uh, or, or anything uh, like along those lines is of interest to you, but for simple uh, diagnostic, observational, or even sort of data presentational um, work in science, this is not going to be the one that we recommend. So we, we'd, all, we'd all almost always recommend going with one of the two other camera options, uh, which are far more practical and less expensive. Before we begin lesson one, I want to give everybody some tips and tricks on things uh, that they can do to properly maintain their equipment, starting with the camera body. So just a moment ago, I told everybody that dust is a big problem as it relates to cameras and focus stacking. And that's because if there is dust on the lens or the camera sensor, it's repeated on every individual image that you take that's used in the final output stack. So the cleaner you keep your camera sensor, the less editing you're going to have to do downstream. Now, Dust is a user-based problem. Uh, the more you keep your lens caps on, and the less you move your cameras around with the lens caps off, the better off you're gonna be. Um, so I wanna first just tell everyone that what I like to do is install the lens on the system first, and you're gonna see this in equipment setup. Keep all the dust caps on, and right when you're ready to go ahead and, and basically install the camera, I will remove the lens cap from the back of the lens. I will carry the camera so that it's just an inch away from the lens. I'll remove the dust cap, and then that way I don't have to move it very far in order to, to sort of marry to the lens. That keeps dust out of here. And it's a very, very good tip and practice in order for everybody to sort of preserve their equipment. Following that, the objectives and the lenses can sometimes have a buildup of dust, not necessarily on the front, but at the rear of the lenses. And the rear is much, much more impactful because it's closer to uh, where the resolution 
or at least uh, the image resolution is going to resolve is towards the back of the lens, so it's going to appear more clearly if that's where you find it. One thing you can do on the objectives to, uh, to sort of mitigate dust is make sure that you lubricate the threads at the bottom of the objective. Sometimes if you're not, some metal shavings can start to come off as you thread and, and unthread over and over again. Those metal shavings can then get on the glass. It's very important to keep the threads on these objectives well lubricated whenever you use them. Also want to add, since we are here and have these, if you drop these objectives, they're almost useless instantaneously. You're not going to see the same clarity that you would if they're well properly maintained and never dropped. So don't ever drop these objectives. Okay, so now let's just sort of suggest that uh, dust has gotten in your camera and you need to clean it. First off, I'd recommend a professional or us. Part of our service agreement uh, with our customers is that if they have dust in their camera sensors, we ask them to send them to us, we'll clean them for no charge, uh, simply because it can be a daunting or a difficult task. However, if you feel you're confident and able to remove dust, we first recommend a gel stick by iLead. This is something you do not wipe. This is something you just dab, pick up, and remove. Uh, and this is usually a follow-up step to just the automatic uh, cleaning option that's available on every Canon camera body. Um, also, in case you're struggling uh, with the gel stick because that dust is really adhered, almost like magnetized to the, the sensor, that can sometimes happen, it's just charged in a weird way, uh, you'll need a more serious kit. I have these here by Altira. Basically, it comes with an air bladder, a couple wipes and solutions, and the instructions are in here in order to clean everything. So I'd recommend this as well if, if again, you attempt to clean camera sensors on your own. Lenses are easy to clean. I don't see a problem if, uh, if you're a little bit nervous if you want to clean the backs and the fronts of your lenses. As it relates to camera sensors, however, uh, it might be good to have those cleaned by a professional or, again, if you're a client of ours, send them back to us. Lastly, I do just want to let everybody know that the reason why we use Canon, we've been using that company for 10 years, not only because they produce very good cameras and lens options for this uh, sort of suite of photography, one that covers all the basics, and I say that knowing that other camera manufacturers are also very good at this, but the reasons why we really choose Canon is one is because they have the best macro lens, the MPE 65. Uh, there are some third party options out there that you can use, but it's a little bit clunkier and not as seamless. And the other reason why we like to use them is their tethering software on the computer allows you to sort of remotely control your camera uh, with great ergonomics, ease of use, uh, and it's very intuitive. So that's sort of the main reason is generally out of operation. Uh, and they're just very good cameras to use, so we highly recommend them and we fully endorse Canon products uh, as, as we sort of move forward. So I think this is a good sort of precursor in terms of what you can expect. Uh, the next and first lesson is going to be equipment set up. And again, we're gonna be setting up the camera and the system in two different ways depending on the sample that we're going to be using and we're going to be using one of those two B's and we're going to alternate every time so that people can become very very clear and fluid uh, on how to use the system. Lastly I will just mention that there is a workflow document that Macroscopic Solutions clients uh, are able to access. It comes included with all of our camera settings, uh, preferred settings. This is something that only our clients have access to. Uh, but the videos are not exclusive to the people that only have this content. You're going to be able to follow along and repeat this process if you are a hobbyist or you have your own camera equipment and are just curious. Uh, but if you're looking to sort of advance further than that, have a turnkey all-inclusive system, please don't hesitate to reach out to Macroscopic Solutions at info at macroscopicsolutions.com. Thanks.